Hello, welcome to another STAT 510 video. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about probability inequalities. Um, the, the usefulness here is perhaps you have a probability you need to calculate, but doing so would be difficult. Uh, oftentimes you can appeal to um, one of these inequalities we're gonna talk about to find a bound on that probability uh, instead of the exact quantity. Uh, which which could be useful for um, proving various things or at least giving you a, a rough idea of um, uh, what that probability could be. Okay, so um, first inequality we're going to look at is Markov's inequality. So here uh, we have some random variable x and uh, we need to add a condition that is a, it is a non-negative random variable. So it can only take uh, values uh, zero or greater. Uh, and we also need to assume that uh, the expected value of X exists. Um, if that's the case, then uh, the probability that X is greater than some positive value T is bounded by the expected value of X divided by T. Okay. So uh, we'll do a quick proof of this. So recall that we said that X is a uh, non-negative random variable. That is, it takes values zero or above. So uh, first step is we simply write out um, the definition of the expected value of X. And here we're assuming uh, a continuous random variable, but the idea would be very similar for a discrete random variable, but we're gonna deal with a continuous case. Um, and then the second step is, so we're going to split the integral into two. So uh, instead of from zero to infinity, we're gonna first go from zero to T, and then we're gonna go from T to infinity. And then if we note this integral from zero to T, um, just because X is non-negative and uh, the PDF here is obviously non-negative, this whole integral has to be non-negative, so uh, that is greater than or equal to zero. So uh, next step then, well then that quant th those two integrals um, are bounded below by the second one. Right, um, because that first integral is non-negative. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is Note that t is the smallest possible value uh, that x can take in this integral. So uh, we can do something here. We can pull t outside the integral and create a new integral that is um, smaller. Okay, uh, and then uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna realize that that new integral that we have um, the integral from t to infinity of f of x dx is exactly a probability statement, in particular, the probability statement that we're interested in. So that is now t times the probability that x is greater than t. And then, you know, with a little rearranging of what we have here, that implies that the probability that x is greater than t is bounded above by the expected value of x divided by t, which is exactly what we were looking to prove. Okay, so there we go. So that's Markov's inequality. So next up is uh, Chebyshev's inequality. Um, I, I pause to note that uh, what I've written here is one spelling of Chebyshev, uh, but there are myriad other ways you might see this written uh, because the original Russian uh, that the name is written in does not use the same alphabet. So when you sort of translate that over, you get a bunch of different spellings. Um, I think another another common one, it starts with a T instead of a T, a T instead of a C, I think it's like a T S, but uh, Chebyshev's is the name of this inequality. Okay, so here we're going to uh, assume there is some mean and variance. So now we're gonna look at a probability that the uh, distance or you know the, the absolute difference between a random variable and its mean 
is um, uh, greater than some quantity t, uh, that is bounded by the variance divided by t squared. Okay, uh, and we'll do a quick proof of this. So uh, we want to bound this quantity. So that's a quantity we want to bound. So what I'm gonna do is inside this probability statement, I'm gonna square both sides. Okay, so this is now squared greater than or equal to t squared. Okay. So now, um, after the value of x minus mu squared, well, that is a non-negative random variable, and t squared is some, <clears throat> excuse me, that is some uh, non-negative um, value. Uh, so now we apply Markov's, okay? So this is, um, that looks like an equal sign. It should be a less than or equal sign. So the expected value of, um, that new random variable inside this probability statement. So that's the expected value of x minus mu squared. I'm dropping the expected value because it's not gonna matter since we're also squaring it. Um, and then I'm dividing by t squared. And again, this is due to Markov's here. And then you might notice that this thing here, well, that's, that's just the definition of variance. So, we end up with what we were looking for, which is sigma squared over t squared. Okay, so that is Chebyshev's. So uh, a quick example. So here we have um, random variables xi that are assumed to be Bernoulli random variables with parameter p, uh, and then we're also defining the usual sample mean. So a question we could ask ourselves is, for um, for some sample size n, how far away is uh, the sample mean from the true mean, in this case, the parameter p? Um, recall that for a Bernoulli random variable, the expected value is p and the variance is p times one minus p. So um, uh, this, uh, I've, I've rewritten uh, that question I asked as a probability statement now. Uh, and then what we can do is just immediately apply Chebyshev's. So this is less than or equal to the variance, <coughs> excuse me, the variance of x bar divided by epsilon squared. Uh, and that is p times one minus p over n. That is, that's the uh, variance. Uh, of x bar, and then we have that epsilon squared still. Uh, we can actually, so that was using Chebyshev's. We can actually um, provide uh, an upper bound on this quantity now, which is uh, less than or equal to one over four n epsilon squared. Um, and this is because, so if you look at uh, p times one minus p, this is bounded above by one fourth. So if we draw a quick little graphic here, because recall that um, P is between zero and one here. So here's zero, here's one, here's a half. And then on this axis, we'll plot this quantity and it looks something like this. Pardon my poor artistry, but this should be exactly one fourth right here. Okay. Um, Something else to note here, which will kind of hint at what we're going to talk about in the next video, is that that probability that we created a bound on, uh, it goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And that, that, that's kind of nice, right? So that's saying that, well, the distance between the sample mean and the true mean the probability that, that there's some small difference between them shrinks to zero as n goes to infinity. That, that's nice.
Um, but we'll talk about that much more in the next video, just sort of hinting at it now. Okay, um, next inequalities. This is uh, Hofding's inequality. So what we're gonna do here is, is sort of look at similar things to the previous inequalities that we looked at, but specify more conditions. So here we have y1 through yn, which are uh, independent random variables, and we have the expected value of each one is zero, and each one, the possible values of the random variables are bounded. So any one of these yi's can only take values between a sub i and b sub i. So if we, um, if we uh, you know, let epsilon be bigger than zero, and for some t bigger than zero, uh, we have this inequality here. And, and the thing I wanna mention, and we'll show this in a minute with an example, um, more conditions um, lead to a sharper inequality, meaning um, the, the, you say like, here we're doing an upper bound, so it'll be a tighter upper bound than a different inequality. And again, we'll show an example of this in a second. Conditions give sharper. So b bounding things, you know, in and of itself is a good thing to do, but you want the sharpest possible bound possible. So for example, I, I could bound any probability above by one, and I know that bound is correct. It's not particularly useful. So you always want an inequality give, that gives you the sharpest possible um, bound. Uh, and to do that, you want as many conditions, well, I don't, you don't, you don't want as many conditions, but uh, as many conditions that apply can potentially lead to a sharper inequality. Okay, so um, directly related to uh, Hofting's inequality is this theorem here, which says that if we have x1 through xn that are iid Bernoulli, so again, this is, um, you should hopefully see that this meets all the conditions uh, of Hofting's, that is we have independent random variables, um, well, the, the well, hold on. I, I don't want to say that. Um, hopefully, no, no. I'm not going to say that. I'll I'll just go on and say here is an inequality in that specific uh, case, uh, and it looks at how far away uh, the sample mean in this instance would be from the true mean. Um, so without actually saying anything, I want to say that um, this is going to be proof by uh, uh, exercise to the reader. Uh, and that is actually, I'll say it's proof, but I can't spell proof. And I can't do good handwriting. I'll call this proof via off things. Uh, and I would suggest that you try it. And then after you try it, check your work because the proof of this uh, is in the appendix. Appendix, did I spell right? Did I... So it's in the appendix of the assigned reading uh, in this chapter. Um, so the, the trick is to um, note that in, in Hofding's, we have this sum of yi's here. Um, so you sort of have to manipulate this uh, in a way that creates yi's. Um, th that'll be sort of the hint there for how to start uh, that particular proof. Okay, so the example I wanted to talk about. So I wanna show how um, in in this, this setup here, so we're gonna talk about x1 through xn, iid Bernoulli's. Um, I wanna compare the bounds created via Chebyshev's and Hoftings. So uh, here I have already written out uh, the probability statement and the bounds that we have obtained first um, here with the, the theorem related to Hoftings and then our previous work here um, for uh, the similar case with Chebyshev's. Okay, so now I wanna look at a specific example because it's, it's not clear that it's sharper by just you know looking at these two quantities. I, I, I'm not a magician, I can't see what's gonna happen here. So when we're gonna do n is 200, I think I wanna do, 
and epsilon is 0 0.01. No, not 0 0.01, 0 0.1 is what I wanna do. Okay, so in this case here, we have one, one over four times 200 times 0 0.1 squared, and that works out to be 0 0.125 assuming I did my math correctly. Uh, whereas in the Hoftings case, we have two to the, or sorry, two times e to the minus two times 200 times 0 0.1 squared. And that works out to be 0 0.03663 and a bunch more stuff, okay. So we see that in this case, Hoftings gives a much sharper upper bound to this probability than Chebyshev's. Okay, so that's why we like using uh, the most, the, 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 we wanna use inequality with the most conditions that are appropriate in the situation that we're given. Okay, so lastly, I just wanna note uh, a couple inequalities that we're not gonna um, do examples of, but just uh, rounding out uh, the information here. So um, uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is useful uh, when you're looking at two random variables simultaneously. It gives an upper bound on the expected value of uh, the absolute value of x times y. Um, and then also Jensen's inequality, um, which uh, gives you information about the, uh, you can bound um, functions of expected values of random variables or expected values of functions of random variables. Uh, and how the inequality works depends upon whether or not the function is convex or concave. Okay, so um, that's it for inequalities. Um, in the next video, we're going to, um, I, I think, see some of the usefulness of these things. We're just sort of outlining them and introducing them here. Um, uh, as always, if you made it to the end of the video, good job, and I will see you in the next one.